So this is the scenario about five years back. Look at this is a global scenario. This information is available in website IRENA. You can uh, means go to this International Renewable Energy Agency and you can find all this data. I am not uh, telling something from this. This is the status of 2015. 8.1 million jobs are from the renewable industry. In that about the 2.7 million jobs are from solar photovoltaic. This gives you an approximate idea where you need to focus if you are a student or an industry and if you want to make a better career for a future. So that's the real reason why I have taken a past data and I am probably moving year by year what are the things which he has given. So you can also look at, I mean, uh, let me take a lesser pointer if, yes. So here, solar photovoltaic, you can see, uh, how much jobs it offers, liquid biofuels, wind energy, how much job it has offered, solar heating, cooling, solid biomass, biomass, uh, hydropower, geothermal, CSP. So approximately means it helps you to align where you stand, right? Yes. So if this is a scenario of 2016, you can just quickly compare how much jobs increasing every year across the globe, only in the renewables. I'm not talking about the conventional topic is uh, uh, this one. Uh, renewable so I'm, I'm sure I mean so to say uh, this helps you to understand how much jobs is growing across the globe in the renewable uh, renewable sector fine this is the status of 2017 this is the status of 2019 June after that we don't have a data but probably means you can understand the link is also there don't worry about this presentation this video will be available in our YouTube channel the jobs is not only growing in the solar PV, but also it's growing in the off-grid solar for energy access. That means the remote village which doesn't have the access to the electricity where we are trying to extend the electricity through long transmission network which was not commercially attractive. So uh, putting a diesel generator may not be also commercially a viable solution. Uh, simple reason because you need to transport the diesel day by day, which is again not working. So if you want to have an off-grid system for a remote village or remote homes, probably this off-grid solar for energy access, probably you can write, you can see there is a huge job environment which is coming in for that also. So along with that, renewables plus energy storage will be the future combo which is going to give you, uh, offer you quite, quite a lot of things. Yes, I told that this PPT will be sad that to the organizers, they will in turn share it to the, um, share it to the all the people, those who have filled the feedback forms. That's to answer it. Uh, Loknath, yes. A quick comparison means what said there is a many people used to complain uh, because when the renewable energy comes in, the job is less. Uh, that is uh, uh, might be, um, I mean, to an extent, it is, uh, I mean, so to say, uh, from the viewer's point of view, it is right because uh, if I have a 500 megawatt uh, thermal power plant, uh, the number of operators, those who are in operation and maintenance, and the same similar capacity 500 megawatt is in the solar, how many operators are there, or how many operation and maintenance people needed. So it is, it is, it is quite different because 500 megawatt thermal plant needs quite a lot of operation and maintenance people. But uh, means what say solar plant doesn't need that many operation and maintenance guys. I mean, so what do you say? Even 500 megawatt plant can be managed uh, means well with uh, five or six people, it's not more than that. So means people's view at that means what say there is renewable is a threat for the job. Answer is no. So that's the real reason why I, uh, I mean, put up the slides. Though it is a bit old data, which is in 2017, but 2017 itself, you can understand the job offered by the clean energy or renewable energy is much, much higher than what's the fossil fuel energy which has given the jobs, right? If you look at uh, uh, clean energy that has offered uh, quite a lot of jobs than uh, means fossil fuel energy. So that I believe an interesting uh, data which you can really understand this, All right? So where we stand, uh, means the jobs across the globe, right? So uh, this data is, uh, uh, means you can see China is leading, of course, uh, no doubt about that. They have a, about, uh, uh, means what to say, 4,078, that is uh, uh, billion. Uh, so that, that's the jobs which uh, China offers and you can take uh, USA, means Europe, uh, USA, Brazil, and we are not lagging far behind, but only thing is like uh, we are not working in a cutting edge technologies. We are uh, having an employment in the renewable sector, but uh, that is mostly with respect to the, uh, I mean, some manufacturing, installations, commissioning, operation, maintenance, not necessarily this r and area, which we need to focus, right? And again, this is also from the same website reference, which you can go to this website after this class and uh, you can very well, uh, very well take it up. What are the equipments which you have? These are all I think probably you can aware like tower, generator, power electronic converter, cables, transformer, switch gears, metering, monitoring and control. Why you have put up all these things? Because even if you just take wind turbine generator, you will be able to get a job 
in i mean so to say different different areas like means what is say some uh, manufacturers might be manufacturing the scroll cage induction generators or somebody manufacturing double effect induction generator or somebody manufactures permanent magnet synchronous generators for a wind turbine uh, business so you can get a job uh, not necessarily in the wind form but uh, in the design of this specific generator which is applicable for a wind turbines so that that that's the real reason why i'm putting up this so means rather than looking at the wind forms or wind turbine generator you can look at the individual components also and you can look at the opportunities right so these are few quick components which i am telling so i have put up uh, some other like towers blades etc also that is uh, basically for other disciplines like mechanical also to get involved and get a job wind turbine is not necessarily an about electrical so here also right side i am giving a quick uh, information about the uh, the single largest wind turbine generator single largest wind turbine generator is 12 megawatt generator i mean so if you go to uh, i mean this region like coimbatore pollachi udumalpet or if you go to this uh, rly moli in the south corner right kayatha or rly moli uh, places you may be seeing quite a lot of wind turbine generators that is about i'm talking about tamil nadu but probably other states also has quite a lot of wind turbine generators nowadays so if you talk about all this only one important aspect which i need to tell that capacities are smaller it means as of now means india means we have not gone with such a big capacity but the world came up with the 12 megawatt single wind turbine generator imagine how big it is means what you may be seeing maximum in the southern part of india that is in tamil nadu is about 2 megawatt so this is about 6 times higher this is mostly used in offshore but yes you can see how much capacity this 12 megawatt height is 220 meters is yes, you can google it and you can get this information if the information is not visible but i'm just giving you an idea of what it is yes yeah i think there are quite a lot of questions which are flying and uh, i mean so our tomorrow's resource persons are also there at uh, uh, yeah what do you say in the chat box amudai is there i think balraman couldn't join because he was in another uh, college uh, program uh, means uh, most of your questions might be answered by our colleagues in the chat box because i may not be able to track all the questions but still i assure you that all your questions will be answered if not today amuda might be noting down all the questions and she will be able to take up the answer for your questions in a tomorrow sessions right it's our responsibility to answer your questions if not I means i will give you the contact number and email id at the end of this slide so i means you can you can reach out very well reach out this yes so wind uh, means i'm putting again few logos uh, means uh, uh, don't uh, fight against me that i'm focusing quite a lot on the job because i am trying to give you a spark why you need to understand the subject or why you need to focus more on the renewables all right once you understand this then probably getting into that and learning that i believe amuda might be much better speaker than me to talk about this yep fine so wind there are quite a lot of company logos which i have added like vesta senvion region power tech wind or Siemens Gamesa Susla Ninax Wind Genercon G so plenty uh, this is not exhaustive list but i have put up as a logo not as a company name listed out that just to remember that uh, means uh, uh, in your mind something will be there so you google it with some names and you just look at what are the requirements they are looking for even if you look at Vesta Chennai they are I means what's say consistently posting the vacancies in the past 3 uh, months even during this covid 19 yes uh, let me quickly jump to the pv solar panel dc fuse uh, breakers contactors such means th these are the equipments which is there in the solar panels which you may be aware and yes so let me move on these are uh, the solar inverter manufacturers across the globe at the top level right huai sungrow sma poltronics and fimer this the, this is a company which uh, taken this uh, solar inverter business from abb recently abb sold the solar inverter business to this company based in italy so they are the top based solar inverter manufacturers across the globe that is from the market research report i am putting all this informations uh, for the students so that i mean so to say they can go out and look at some locos some companies uh, means rather than just like uh, going through something in the books yes anyway means much awaited your topic i will quickly come in this is the solar panel manufacturers solar panel manufacturers these are all solar panel uh, manufacturers in india these are all uh, means what to say uh, top solar manufacturers in india as on 
like Vikram Solar, Adani Solar, they are solar panel manufacturers. And probably if you are talking about what is the efficiency of the solar panel, what is the efficiency of thin film, what is the efficiency of monocrystalline, polycrystalline. So probably if you are doing some research on uh, the enhancing the efficiency of this, then probably it is the right companies which you need to approach to promote your research or to get understand means what is going on in the real time. Yes, this is our topic. I have ended up with the right topic which we need to end up with. So when I am integrating this renewable resources, what are the problems which we are facing? These are the problems which we are facing. The problems which we are facing is uh, voltage, means when I am connecting a wind turbine generator, uh, the voltage is fluctuating. When I am connecting the solar inverter, voltage is fluctuating. It's an under voltage, over voltage, flickers, right? And the voltage is not constant if it is keep fluctuating. Equipment loading, whenever I connect this wind turbine generator, sometimes it is overloaded. Most of the time it is underutilized. So how to, how to manage it? When I am adding this wind turbine or a solar, what is the impact on the losses, whether it is increasing the losses or reducing the losses? If I am adding a wind turbine generator or a solar inverter, what happens to this uh, short circuit level? What about stability? I mean, uh, uh, I means in a system country like India, uh, probably means you can uh, uh, put out what is the percentage of renewable installed capacity which we have it in India in the chat box. So India has some installed capacity right india has some uh, installed capacity so now you just uh, text it or post it in the chat box what's the percentage of renewable capacity we have it in india what's the percentage of renewable capacity installed capacity i'm asking so that means for that you need to know what's the total installed capacity in india and you also need to know what's the renewable installed capacity in india and you tell me what's the percentage of renewable capacity in the total total installed capacity that if you know the answer probably you can uh, put it uh, in the chat box and somebody has asked about the intrinsic how do we select the intrinsic uh, okay for that i will come up with uh, uh, some i will come up with uh, uh, some some questions like at the end of the sessions or maybe tomorrow morning we select the bright students from uh, some sessions like this we post up quest a lot of questions i mean we identify the right talent and we will give a free intrinsic for them and for others, yes, we are also giving a paid intensive. But yes, if you want to enter into the core company, the logic what we have is the student has to join with us in power projects in the second semester. And he has to learn like softwares like Dialux and then third semester PVSS, fourth semester ETAP, fifth semester Dixieland and then do uh, seventh and eighth semester do the projects. And when he has done this, probably means we'll see, uh, he has a much more market value than uh, means what we are offering as a process salary in our power projects. So means what we'll say they may continue with us or probably if they get a much better opportunity outside, they can go. So getting a job is quite easy. Yes, there are answers are flying. So uh, to make it uh, um, uh, answer that question, probably let me quickly. Yeah, thanks. There are about 220 concurrent viewers. Okay, that's really a good number. So I'm just Googling CEA, Central Electricity Authority. Please go to this website. This is a website which you should not miss it in your life. I will, I mean, put it in the chat box also or someone else also can put it. Uh, yes. Right. So means what to say, uh, this is a website which you should not miss. Go through all these topic, four topics, daily reports, executive summary, installed capacity and power maps. In an installed capacity, you can find all the information which you want. I think Mohan Kumar has already given the installed capacity is 87 gigawatt. That is a renewable capacity. Yes. So you will get a data of as on 30th June. 30th June, as on 30th June. What's the installed capacity? Region wise, type wise, coal, lignite, gas, diesel, etc. Right. We have 371 gigawatt installed capacity as on 30th June, 371 gigawatt, right? Out of this 371 gigawatt, 87.6 gigawatt comes from renewables. That is approximately about 23.5 percentage, 87.6 gigawatt out of 371 gigawatt. And if you ask the split up of 87 gigawatt, here is a split up. Solar is about uh, 35 gigawatt and the wind is about 37 gigawatt. If you want to look at the state wise, probably this information is available in the subsequent pages. And I think, uh, I mean, in general, all my sessions I used to sell this. After watching these sessions, you have to do some homework after this to understand all this. So please uh, do your homework after, after our sessions, right? So if you want to look at Tamil Nadu, you can easily find out in the, uh, this one. Tamil Nadu has an installed capacity of 32842 gigawatt and out of which renewable is coming with uh, means what is the total renewable is about 14 
thousand megawatt approximately we have means more than uh, what's the indian average with respect to the renewables if you take in that perspective karnataka is uh, more than 55 percentage of renewables karnataka has installed capacity of 29000 but they have more than 15000 uh, megawatt renewables right this is the information just i'm throwing it uh, because tomorrow we will come up with some quiz programs from that we will select the students for an internship and for that means this information might be useful okay right so means why you have talked about or why you have gone for that is the stability what is stability stability is the ability of the power system to remain synchronism with the to remain synchronism uh, uh, with the grid right that's for an angular stability but if we keep on increasing this renewable sources wind or solar which is intermittent in nature that is the one thing which doesn't have inertia that is a second thing like when it is connected via a power electronic converter it doesn't have any kinetic energy within it if i have a synchronous generator means if there is a sudden reduction in frequency means the kinetic energy stored in this synchronous machine based on its inertia releases the kinetic energy and it means also it maintains the frequency to the better extent but inverters uh, doesn't stores any energy so whenever there is a reduction in frequency the frequency will free fall so means that's the stability which i am talking about in addition to lvrt and hvrt it is really important to maintain the inertia of the system at a much better level so for a disturbance in the system the system should not lose the frequency to very lower value or a very higher value so that's also another important aspect which stability perspective which we need to talk i believe amuda will be able to take through you with the support of the excellent power factory software tomorrow right and uh, i mean we are talking about the next important things uh, that i think i have already discussed when you add wind or solar this comes with an inverter or a converter that injects a harmonics that creates a harmonics that also adds a flicker issues and when you are uh, coordinating with the protection and relay coordination that's another big issue high landing and load settings means what is if the uh, part of the grid disconnects and uh, operates along with the renewables then how do you manage the frequency voltage uh, power quality issues that's another concern so this are uh, not all this are all some uh, uh, problems which we are facing so somebody has asked about uh, support or startup etc i think this is the answer for them as well means if you are really capable or if you are able to really uh, scale your skills getting an opportunity is uh, plenty so as i told even power projects we don't have any marketing engineers or sales engineers in our organizations but still we are getting a projects that's because of the quality what we do so the same thing which i can tell to the students also means if you enhance the skills jobs will come to you rather than you are going and approaching the skills so means if you feel means you have enriched already with the skills please uh, please contact me means I, I share my contact number at the end of the sessions means i will i will review it and i will no hesitation to take in my organization right this is opportunities in the government sector as well like ntpc nhpc nlc india i have to stress this one important aspect nlc india NLC is the large, NLC stands for Navy Lignite Corporation, right? Lignite Corporation. So they are basically into the thermal. But they are now the largest single entity holds highest solar installed capacity in India. That means they have installed a huge capacity and they came up with some battery energy storage systems in Andaman projects that are all some uh, projects which you should not really miss. Uh, you just Google it with uh, NLC Andaman. Uh, yeah tender specification you will get a beautiful spec that is available in google right um, 20 megawatt pv 16 megawatt pcs and 8 megawatt i mean uh, means most likely opening this internet uh, just to say that means all these informations are already available in the website website itself few people may claim that means the information is not available so you can you can really watch this informations in this and you can uh, get the specification also like this is a specification right so this is a specification which you can download i think uh, if you want i can open it but uh, yeah uh, you you can uh, download it and you can uh, i mean go through the specification try to understand what what the industry expects right look at what are the companies those who have participated what they are asking with respect to the renewables those who are doing research in solar or wind or energy storage please i mean so to say also align yourself with some industry right I have not done anything. I have just Googled it with NLC and the Montender specification. This is for battery energy storage, right? Perfect. Let me come back. Okay. Uh, even NTPC now came up with quite a lot of uh, uh, solar plants, quite a lot of solar plants. Nibi, you might be aware that's the National Institute of Wind Energy. Uh, probably means I can just quickly go to their website also. I'm throwing quite a lot of information. I am, I mean, a bit faster that, that I can understand. But anyway, this video will be available. Okay, I'm also, I mean, worrying about the time, right? I mean, I have already exhausted 43 minutes of golden time, what I have given to me, right? Google it with the Nibi. 
right okay i am not going to the careers that you can watch if you want a job there but i am looking at uh, more interesting informations what the nivi has given i uh, mean website may be slow you just google it with the nivi they have measured the data of wind and solar in ladakh region and they have given i mean sort of say complete details of what's the wind potential and solar potential that is available in the nivi nivi website page in the first home page itself so that gives you an idea of what's the wind potential which we have and uh, probably means we have talked about this installed capacity and installed capacity is 370 gigawatt right that's what we have talked about 370 gigawatt but if you look at this nivi data that uh, website is coming up uh, so it's a bit slow uh, yeah anyway so here if you just uh, look at it you will get this data they have projected a capacity of uh, 590 gigawatt of wind potential in india alone at 120 meter height okay please go through such data and they have i mean so to say ladakh uh, capacity data which they have already published here on this uh, yes yeah where it is yeah wind yeah wind potential at an uh, atlas minutes of the meeting of this uh, ladakh region wind and solar assessment studies in ladakh project See, this are the informations which you need to go through and to understand better what is really a really a potential what we have it in india right so uh, i mean towards so these are the organizations also support i believe quite a lot of academic institutions in uh, joint ventures or um, joint uh, developments etc academic institutions can also approach navy for uh, uh, means what is a some uh, projects which they can take it up yep so seki i think uh, uh, means i have talked all so i I'll let me take one more minute to talk about the seki that is stands for solar energy corporation of india they came up with quite lot of tenders of solar specifically and recently they are coming up with uh, i mean so to say energy storage projects this is another website which you need to uh, we should not miss out let me compare the price from thermal to this uh, renewables uh, approximately the cost of the electricity which needs to be generated from thermal works out around 3.5 rupees to 4.5 rupees today right 3.5 rupees to 4.5 rupees today uh, means what is the best price which you expect what is the solar can offer you just type it in the chat box what is the uh, energy cost means what is the cost of levelized cost of energy to generate one unit electricity from thermal one unit electricity from wind one unit electricity from uh, solar you probably type out uh, thermal how much cost solar how much cost wind how much cost i am asking not the capital investment i am asking the levelized cost of energy that means to generate one unit of electricity how much cost which we need to invest i think uh, that's the question which i have posted you can answer it and i am going with that tender of uh, yes seki 1200 megawatt green core renewable power tender this gives the answer for that i will post this also in the chat box which you can uh, uh, i mean so to say uh, understand they have uh, i mean so to say almost renewable plus energy storage to offer a firm power is also also yeah cheaper so uh, let me uh, i think i have missed out uh, something less so in the meantime i'll take that as well yep yeah. yes fine so 2.93 rupees for a solar 1.9 rupees for a solar 2.5 for a solar 2.3 2.5700 per kilowatt hour for a solar that is 1.7 rupees i have understood okay thanks for a good answers means it all depends upon the location installed capacity whether it is a small or a large capacity etc the world has witnessed the best price from the solar is about 1 rupees 7 paise it means don't think that that's the price across the globe for whatever may be the capacity but when you are going for a very large wind solar parks or a solar farms i mean uh, then the price uh, cost levelized cost of energy comes down drastically and uh, with that reduction in cost means the world has already witnessed the cost of at the price of 1 rupee 7 paise that is damn damn cheap compared to this 3 rupee 5 paise uh, 3 rupee 50 paise to 4 rupee 50 paise from thermal so that means uh, solar i means even if you go with uh, means what to say not the best price if you look at the average price yes it will be in the range of about 2 rupee to 2 rupee 50 paise depends on the location and capacity this is cheaper this is cheaper than thermal that means today we are going to the renewables not because of the environmental concerns but it's also because of the economical benefit so the gone are the days I means approximately about 20 years back the cost of electricity generated from the solar plant is about 20 rupees per unit by the time you have expected a subsidy you have expected the government support now the solar becomes cheaper 
and probably if you look at comparatively for an industry this is a precise point which i am telling to the students means what to say industry is paying 5 rupees per unit plus the demand charges and the commercial buildings commercial entities are paying 8 rupees 5 paise per unit that is the tariff which i am telling in, in tamil nadu but if you go with the solars you will be able to generate the electricity from much cheaper than this so the advantage or the opportunity how the student has to create you i mean go and approach a nearby industry tell them that means you design a solar plant in their rooftop or the area which is available for that industry at free of cost using some simulation software like pv sist then means what is it either they implement it or not that is altogether different if you done such an analysis for three or four uh, uh, industries that adds the value to your resume and getting the job in uh, means renewable industry is quite easy that that's the approach which the student has to take it means i generally means what to say uh, tell to the student community like this students has to develop the skills and tell to the industry industry please watch me this is a skill what i have and if you want you can uh, take me if not means i am not the loser but you are the loser the student should have that much confidence yeah that that's my view of it anyway fine let me uh, go ahead with further uh one important thing uh, which i have talked about is uh, i am my youtube channel itself okay we have uh, done such uh, some small uh, projects in our uh, youtube channels with uh, uh, live examples right that's available which you can watch to develop your own solar projects your own solar plants right we have done like uh, grid connected and standard on solar plant designs grid connected and standard on solar plant design part 1 grid connected and standalone microgrid design and grid connected and standalone pv solar plant designs these are all the softwares which you can download at free of cost for one month in your own uh, in your own page and uh, i mean so to say you can uh, design this and as i told you can approach your nearby industries and you can do that yes uh, fine so i think uh, time is uh, 11:49 if there is any questions probably you can post it yeah i think uh, okay i don't want any appreciation uh, means or say my i means i will feel my session is worth when at least 10 percentage of the audience those who are listening to this has uh, tried the simulation software and uh, reach out a better industry or if they have enhanced their skills get a job uh, because of my session then i will be i will be happy rather than just saying you know, great session or something please if you say great session means how you have to communicate that to me is uh, Uh, do some analysis and uh, send your reports to the email id which i am sharing at my end of the sessions that i will say i mean take as a positive feedback for me yes thanks for that let me go ahead yes this is the contact number and email id which i have don't uh, think that my session is end i am stopping my presentation i am going to the simulation okay so please bear with me for that uh, so i am i am putting uh, uh, both uh, my contact number and email id in the chat box if you want yes please don't think that uh, i mean the session is over okay i think i have forget to add the one of the important uh, feedback form which i share anyway that i will that that's my mistake okay i have forget to add it in the chat box feedback form is already there in the chat box okay so i am not stopping the session i am giving you the feedback link 10 minutes ahead the feedback link will be there at least at least means what do you say for next uh, next two hours that means up to 3 uh, o'clock that uh, feedback link which will be available you can fill it okay don't expect now if you try that may give us some error because they will open it at by by 11:55 or something okay chat i have shared the feedback link but i am starting my simulation session right now so if you want to continue yes you can continue if you want to fill the feedback form and if you want to go out i i don't have any issues yes so let's let's go ahead with the simulation so i am just taking up a small solar inverter i believe it means uh, i need not touch about pv sist modeling of this i can uh, tell you an idea how how you want to do that means you google it with pv sist you will be able to develop i means download the simulation software on your own if you download this pv sist means you can uh, do this uh, download the software it is one month free and you can do the exercise which i have told in our youtube channel which is available you can follow it and you can develop it i am not going to focus on how to design develop uh, this uh, solar plant design i am just going to today focus on what's the impact of the solar inverters on loadings equipment loadings losses and other stuffs right so let me take a small example 
let me take a small example of an industry. The industry, say example, receives the power supply at uh, uh, 11 kV and uh, stepping down to 415 volt. And let's assume that industry has a loads and let's uh, assume we will take up some small solar inverters and we will discuss how, how it's generating power. Right? Yes, perfect. So let me take about uh, the industry receives the power supply at 11 kV and let's uh, say the transformer rating is 2.5 MVU. So what I have done now, what I have done now, so the industry receives the power supply from electricity board, assume that say example TNEB in Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu electricity board or a disco, tan disco or whatever you call, receives the power supply at 11 kV and means what is say using their 2.5 MVU transformer, they are stepping down to 415 volt. But interestingly, I have had intentionally added one uh, specific information, the bus voltage is uh, 415, but the transformer voltage is not 415, that is 0 0.433. If you have noticed that, if you have noticed that, yes, that's perfect. HV side is 11 kV, LV side is not 415 volt, that is 0.433. Now there is a question to the participants. Yeah, somebody is asking what is the question, uh, what is the software? The software is ETAP. ETAP 20, uh, so if you look at the session, the session is going to be handled by two different uh, things. Uh, one is ETAP uh, that I am going to talk today and of course it will continue tomorrow. And tomorrow, I mean Samudha is going to come and talk about this, um, uh, going to talk about this, um, what? Uh, Dixel and Power Factory. Yes. So two softwares which we are going to talk from technical perspective and the last day we are going to come up with a commercial software that is reopt. So today what, what software which I am you can look at this at the top that is that is the software. And still if somebody expects the feedback link I think I have already said that but the, for the benefit of uh, people's uh, means what to say uh, I am I am sharing it again. Yes fine. So 2.5 MVA 11 bar 0.433 kV. This is an industry which receives the power supply at 11 kV and it is connected at 0.415 kV. Now, uh, I mean, so what to say, what's the impedance of the transformer? Shall I run the load flow? I mean, load flow will give an error because I have not given the enough information to run a load flow because I have not given the transformer impedance, right? So if I am giving the transformer impedance, I'm just using a typical impedance of the transformer, right? If I run a load flow, load flow will run. So here the voltage is 100%, here the voltage is slightly more than 100% because the transformer voltage is slightly higher than what's the voltage of the 415 volt bus, right? So I have used a transformer of 11 bar 0.433, I am connecting to 415 volt bus. So here if you look at the voltage is slightly higher. If you plot with the units, I don't have any loads. So the uh, power is 0 kilowatt, 0 kVR. And uh, there should be a no load loss in the transformer, but uh, I mean, so to say, that is not really accounted. I have not given the data and that cannot be performed using balanced load flow also, right? So let me add a small load. Let me add a small load. So for a 2.5 MVA transformer, I may connect, say, example, 2 MVA load at 0.8 power factor. Let me connect with 2 megawatt at 80 power factor. So keep power constant and change the power factor to 80. So that's approximately 2.5 MVA not approximately exactly 2.5 MVA load. I am trying to load this transformer for 100%, 100%, yes. So let me go ahead with the load flow. So I am running a load flow analysis. I am running a load flow analysis, right? Let me reduce it. So here you can understand two or three important observations. I can plot the losses of the transformer as well, yes. So previously I have run this industry without any load. Now I am running this with load. I mean I am put up complete 2.5 MVA load. So now from this you can understand the transformer is already overloaded. That's the real reason why the transformer is in red color. Probably if you look at all other equipments are not in red color, but the transformer is in red color. How can I say that is overloaded? You can easily say this alert view and you can see how much percentage the transformer is overloaded. That's available. So the transformer is 105 percentage loaded. Transformer is 105 percentage loaded. But I have connected a 2.5 MVA transformer with a 2.5 MVA load only, right? Then how it is 106 percentage loaded? Because of the losses in the transformer. If you look at the LV side, it is 2.5 MVA, but HV side, it is more than 2.5 MVA. 
LV said it is 2.5 MVA, but HV said it is 2.6 to 8 MVA. So uh, this is the reason why behind uh, I mean, so the transformer is saying 1.6 percentage. If you put 2.6 to 8 divided by 2,500, you will get that 1.6 percentage, which you can look at this. Look at here, right? That's perfect, right? So why it is uh, overloaded? It is overloaded. Simple reason because the transformer losses. So when we say transformer rating. transformer has high voltage winding and low voltage winding both the windings are rated only for 2.5 mva you have loaded lv winding with a 2.5 mva so there are some losses so hv winding is loaded more than 2.5 mva that's the real reason why the transformer is overloaded fine now let's add a solar inverter or a wind turbine generator for easiness let me add a, i mean for the wind turbine generator i will take up the solar inverter uh, tomorrow yeah i am i am adding a wind turbine generator So means before adding a wind turbine generator, let me look at the power factor also. That's another important aspect which you need to look into, right? Uh, so let me again go back to uh, kilowatt kVR, 2000 kilowatt for 1500 kVR. That is 0.8 power factor. If I want to plot kVA power factor, you can plot. Power factor on the LV side is 0.8, but if you look at the power factor on the HV side, is further low. It is power factor is 0.772. So here the power factor is given in percentage, so it is 80 percentage, which means 0.8 power factor. So the power factor at LV side is 0.8, but if you look at the metering is available in the HV side where the industry is connected, that is a point of common coupling, or this is where the metering is available, where they measure the uh, demand and uh, power uh, means maximum demand as well as the energy which consumed along with the power factor. And if there is any poor power factor, they will put a penalty. So the power factor is now 77.2. So you need to maintain the power factor of uh, depends upon. Uh, depends upon the uh, uh, utilities to utilities they will be having a different tariff for a power factor at least at 11 kv you need to maintain a power factor of more than 0.9 so that rule but now you have don't you are not able to maintain the power factor as uh, 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 0.9 you are maintaining only 0.77 for that you need to put a capacitor bank to maintain it but my concern is not that when i am adding a wind turbine generator um, i mean so i can add a solar inverter also tomorrow and you can show you but today for an easiness modeling in wind turbine generator is easy i am taking wind turbine generator so means you can look at what's the power factor to that okay after adding a wind turbine generator you can you can see what's the power factor which happens at the grid so i am adding a wind turbine generator assume that industry has a nearby space and they have added a wind turbine generator and wind turbine generator you may appreciate the fact that you have four types of the wind turbine generators right type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 right type 1 is screw cage induction generator type 2 is woundering induction generator type 3 is double fed induction generator type 4 is permanent magnet synchronous generator with a full converter right there are four types so let me take i mean what is a type 1 if you take type 1 that is induction generator so i am putting up just a simple uh, i mean what to say maybe 1 megawatt 1 um, megawatt generator okay i am putting just 1 megawatt generator right so let me see what happens now i am looking at the power factor real power reactive power everything right so i am running a case again so here what happens to your power factor your power factor has further degraded to 0.41 am i right yes so means my uh, view is clear i am just trying to highlight some problems which industry faces or how to give a solutions i am not going to talk more time is already clocked at 12 so i will share the feedback forms once again for those who have joined bit later yep yes okay fine that's great so means what is here let me remove this uh, wind turbine generator right so let's compare the apple to apple uh, the results with wind turbine generator and without wind turbine generator means industry previously means what is without wind turbine generator now they have added a wind turbine generator of type 1 so with this type 1 let's look at means what's the change in the results so first rather than confusing with kva let's plot the results in kilowatt kvr itself Yes, without wind turbine generator, the industry load is 2000 kilowatt, 1500 kilowatt kVAR. That is a reactive power. The losses in the transformer is 28.4 kilowatt and 170 kVAR. So the power which you are consuming from the utility is 2028 kilowatt. That means if your industry runs for with this load for one hour, then you will be consuming 2028 units. For that, you will be billed. And if the If it is an industry, if it is a commercial building, then 2028 into 8 rupees approximately. You can imagine how much the price. So it means if your industry is running for one hour like this, then you need your electricity bill will be 16,000 rupees for one hour. 
that I am uh, making an approximation with an assumption of commercial and it is in Tamil Nadu and tariff is 8 rupees because you are consuming about 2000 units. 2000 units into 8 rupees, it is 16,000 rupees is what you need to pay to the utility for one hour, right? Now, I mean, is it the only tariff? Answer is no. Means you need to pay for a penalty or uh, means what's it? you need to maintain the power factor. If you are not maintaining the power factor, you need to pay a penalty. That penalty again changes from the uh, means what is it? Uh, utility to utility, but you have a power factor of only 0.7. For that, means what's you need to maintain power factor of at least 0.9. So the power factor uh, which you are not able to maintain at 0.9, you are maintaining only 0.77. For that, you need to pay a penalty. Right. So now uh, let me go back to this answer. Let's look at the difference. When the uh, 2000 kilowatt is my demand, 2000 kilowatt is my demand. I am generating 1000 kilowatt from wind turbine generator. Again, please, please be remember. Power system is the most dynamic system in the world. Power system is the most uh, dynamic system in the world. Load flow analysis is a steady state analysis. Load flow analysis is a steady state analysis. So means you are not uh, doing a dynamic analysis. You are trying to capture only one operating point of the uh, varying uh, power system dynamics. Right? I think feedback form, I have shared it already, Gaurav, if you are not able to get it, uh, I think I can share it once again. Okay, I okay. if you want to share it in the window, I can probably share it. Anyway, in the chat window, it is available, so uh, you can you can take it. Otherwise, probably I can open it in a word and I can paste it as well. Anyway, that is there in the uh, chat box, which I have already shared. You can take the feedback link, right? This is, this is the uh, feedback link, which you need to follow, but... Uh, here, if you sew, means you may not be able to trace it, right? That's the real reason why I have uh, uh, texted in that, okay? Probably give me maybe another 10 minutes, 12.15, I will uh, finish my session, okay? Uh, give me 10 more minutes, I will finish the session. But this is the feedback form if you want. So, if you are really concerned about certificates and feedback forms, once again, I will share it. So, yes. This is the feedback. Uh, this is the feedback link, uh, which again and again I am sharing. Hope definitely that will be visible to you, right? And I have shared it in this uh, one also. Okay, I will. I will continue my session. Give me for ten minutes. Ten minutes. I will. I will. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, what's the wind up my session? And uh, post all your questions. I will ensure that tomorrow means I will address all these questions. Okay. Or else uh, probably means if you are okay with that uh, means. Uh, every Sunday I have some sessions like Ask Silva in our channel. Whatever the questions which you are asking, I am giving the answer. So, if, I mean, so I will take up that question there also if you want to join on Sunday at 10 o'clock. Every Sunday I have a session at our YouTube uh, uh, saying that Ask Silva. You can ask whatever may be the questions relevant to power systems and renewables. Right. Fine. So, I have added uh, here the demand is 2000 kilowatt. With the losses, it is 2028 kilowatt here. Here means the demand is 2000 kilowatt, but I am generating 1000 kilowatt. What is the point which I am trying to stress here is the wind turbine generator capability is 1 megawatt only when the wind speed is rated wind speed or above then it will generate this capacity if the wind speed is less then it will not generate and if it is less than cutting wind speed it will not even generate the power okay so means it is a one moment with a peak demand and a peak wind generation that's the scenario which i am comparing only one scenario there could be many scenarios like peak wind uh, less load peak wind uh, uh, average load and so many 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 possible operating configurations are there that you can use a time domain load flow and you can do. I am just capturing only one moment of a large dynamic power systems. Right. Perfect. Right. So 25.6 here also if you look at the, the losses are almost the same. Okay. But the beauty is means what to say here uh, 2000 kilowatt is my demand. 1000 kilowatt is generated by my wind turbine generator. So I need to draw only 1000 kilowatt from utility with a loss of 25.6. I am uh, drawing 1026 kilowatt from here. That means I will be billed only for 1026 kilowatt. That means approximately, I mean, so to say, I will consume only 1000 units and my bill will reduce from 16,000 to 8,000. Correct? It is, I, am, I have reduced the consumption by off. So my electricity bill with respect to the energy consumption will come down by off. Okay. Now, the other factor, is it the only factor? Answer is no. Here, even without a wind turbine generator, I have not, means maintained the power factor as 90. For that, I will receive a penalty for a power factor. So that is the one thing. But after adding a wind turbine generator type 1, what's the problem which I have faced? That's what I am explaining here. The power factor has reduced further from 0.7 to 0.44. And if you look at this, you will be put a huge penalty for that. So that means what's the cost which you have shared it in the energy 
are saved it in the energy you will be ending up with paying as a penalty for a power power factor that's because of uh, this wind turbine generator is type 1 this uh, wind turbine generator is type 1 that is a school cage induction generator which will not be able to generate reactive power instead it will consume reactive power from the system so that means you need to add a capacitor bank in parallel with this wind turbine generator to compensate the reactive power consumed for this uh, wind turbine generator okay so this is not a real scenario let's go to the real scenario so even if i run a load flow here i mean so to say the industry will not run with this scenario i mean 2.5 mv at 0.8 power factor and they will not pay penalty for the power power factor what they will do they will put up a capacitor bank they will put up a capacitor bank to ensure to ensure the uh, power factor is maintained above 0.9 per unit so the demand is about 1500 kvr so approximately they will put 1000 kvr or 1100 kvr right i'm putting it in kvr i'm putting 1100 kvr um and probably means you need to look at what's the voltage also that is the most important thing okay so i have connected a 1000 kvr capacitor to check what's the power factor let's look at only the results here yeah now the reactive power consumed by this load remains 1500 kvr but the capacitor is generating some reactive power so the power factor at the grid is enhanced right previously the power factor is 0.77 now look at the power factor the power factor has increased to 0.935 so that means the power factor i am able to maintain maintain better uh, the power factor is maintained better and hence uh, means what say you need not pay any penalty so this is how the industry works okay here i have two questions for you i am not expecting answer from you today it means you can answer it maybe later my first question i have given 1100 kvr capacitor bank am i right I have given 1000 kvr capacitor bank but unfortunately this 1000 kvr capacitor bank is not generating 1600 1000 kvr why that's my question number one so i always uh, means what is a uh, habit of asking questions and answering it that's the way of engineering right i strongly believe engineering is asking about the right question to the right person at the right time i believe this is the right time uh, I'm, I'm asking to the right people those who are able to answer this question i have given 1000 kvr capacitor but it is not generating 1000 100 kvr it is generating only 849 kvr my question is why okay so uh, you answer it probably today or tomorrow that's fine or probably means even i have shared my contact number right you can probably very well write the uh, i mean your uh, answers to this email id or contact number you have i have shared this number already in the chat box or even you can come to our channel you can find out these numbers for any reasons you can contact it okay i expect some answers for why this 1000 kvr capacitor is generating only 849 kvr right so now i am adding the same capacitor i means here by means of adding 1000 kvr capacitor bank i have done two important things which you need to i have to stress it the capacitor bank compared to this previously it has enhanced the voltage profile that's one second one it has reduced the losses previously if you look at it the losses is about 28 kilowatt now it has reduced the losses it means it has also reduced the reactive power losses previously the reactive power loss is about 170 kvr now it has been reduced to 115 kvr so it has reduced the losses also so that that's most important thing which you need to talk about right so the capacitor bank has boosted the voltage reduced the reactive power loss reduce the real power loss that that's all the advantage and probably if you want to more about the power factor we have power factor part one part two in our youtube channel which you can watch for better understanding so before concluding let me talk about only one important aspect with the same 1100 kvr capacitor bank with the wind turbine generator what will be the impact that's what i need to see i am going with the same 1100 kvr capacitor bank with the same 480 volt okay intentionally means i have another question why intentionally i am changing this 415 volt to 480 volt here the bus voltage is only 415 volt but for a capacitor bank intensely i have changed it to 480 volt is there any specific reason i believe if you know that reason you can answer it if not you go to our channel find out the power factor correction part one and part two you will you will get the answer for that yes perfect let me go ahead so even after adding a capacitor bank with the wind turbine generator means i have compensated the reactive power requirements only for the loads i have not really compensated the reactive power requirements which is needed for the wind turbine generator so still the power factor is less so here if you look at the power factor is i am able to maintain 0.93 power factor where i don't have any penalty but if when i am adding a wind turbine generator even with an existing capacitor i need to pay a huge penalty because the power factor is still less it is only 0.6 per unit so that means i need to put up and increase the uh, capacitor bank maybe let me let me check what's the capacitor bank which i need to put 
let me add maybe uh, means change the capacitor to maybe 1800 or something or 1600 let's see how the results changes so i need to bring the power factor to at least 0 0.9 to eliminate the power factor am i right i mean eliminate the power factor penalty still not so means if you look at this it is an interesting very interesting question like even with even with i mean 2000 kva capacitor that is 80 percentage of the transformer rating i am unable to bring the power factor more than more than 0.86 that means still i need to pay still i need to pay uh, penalty to the utility right so that's all uh, i mean i have i thought of i mean putting quite a lot of uh, things uh, but anyway time is a constraint i think i have added a value to you so give me two more minutes uh, if you are a student or an industry i think i can add a little more value on it so just go to our linkedin page please consistently follow our linkedin page consistently follow our peoples those are writing articles our employees those are putting quite a lot of articles right uh, if you want to follow me in linkedin i am i am available with this name selvakumar you just google it with selvakumar you will get this so i want you to follow us in linkedin profile if you students want to learn something more yes we have coming up with some intensive this post also which we have put yeah we came up with a very very interesting uh, 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 intensive for the students which starts on 20th july which starts on 20th july okay we this is a basically a, i mean so say coaching and doing you will be installing the software this is a laptop is mandatory for that you need a laptop with a good internet connectivity we are starting the course on 20th we will be training in all the seven simulation softwares so in this at least you will be installing this five simulation softwares like homer pro homer grid reapt dialux uh, dialux evo and pv assist and you will be practicing it so the coaching will be 10 to 12 30 and you will be practicing this and that means we will be having a session like 7 to 8 where you will be asking doubts clarifications or we will be reviewing your simulations the students those who are willing to join us probably means you can just follow our uh, link here in the uh, uh, linkedin which we have the page which i have i uh, mean i believe i have added a little bit value so with that i'm uh, taking an additional advantage of you to post that uh, link this is uh, but one thing i mean so what do you say this is a paid course okay 3540 rupees is the price uh, 3000 plus 540 gst is the price but we have an offer like if you pay it in google pay means we will give you at 2500 rupees that's that's an offer which you have which you can enjoy that's that's for a college students and if you're an industry person we offer quite a lot of industry courses i uh, mean what do you say uh, today there is a course which we are starting this is only for an industry this is only for an industry like lvmv system protection which we are starting that starts today evening 6 to 9 right uh, the course piece is uh, 10000 i mean uh, means i am not going to promote all i mean you go to our linkedin page i believe definitely you will get uh, more additional values in our channel yes i think uh, that's it from my end let me take few questions uh, with maybe one or two minutes time is 12 15 still 175 people are watching after after my posting of the feedback forms also that means you are really interested if it possible let me take a few questions yes there is a question or an information from arul kumar reactive power flows is based on the magnitude arul kumar you just go to one of our uh, this one uh, advanced power system simulation softwares where we have answered how the real power flows reactive power flows to definitely uh, i mean so you will get answered arul kumar i request you to go to watch the video uh, advanced power system simulations part one that we have done about uh, 15 days back in our youtube channel that's to arul kumar there is a question or answer i think from sadhanant uh, agarwal to protect from the switching voltage i think that he might have answering why i have given the over voltage i think this question is answered in our power factor correction part one and part two so there will be a series reactor which will be added in addition to the uh, capacitor bank to minimize the interest current and this capacitor, this inductor increases the voltage at the capacitor terminal. That's the reason why that uh, means capacitor is at a high, slightly higher rated voltage. But anyway, which you can uh, go through that, uh, our uh, power factor correction part 1 and part 2, which you can get some additional values. Yeah, when you will receive a certificate, Alex, uh, I means you will receive a certificate for after filling 3 days of the feedback form. Uh, feedback, uh, today is the day 1. So the session is going to continue day 2 and day 3. You will get the certificate after, after day 3 if you are filling. There is a question from Jagdish, uh, KVI is a function of voltage square. Yes, perfect Jagdish. Yes, you can manually also validate it. Uh, I think you have answered it uh, 
beautifully so this is how we identify our uh, uh, means what is the right interns and right employees for us yes check this please be in touch with us uh, definitely means if we found in other uh, few programs we will, we will definitely catch you so uh, reactive power generated by the capacitor is proportional to square of the voltage so the rated capacitor voltage is 480 volt but the bus voltage is less that's the reason why it is not generating 1100 kvr it is not because of efficiency or loss it's because of uh, the voltage applied is less and the reactive power generated by the capacitor bank is proportional to square of the voltage yes i think sadan agarwal also answered that yes probably you can manually validate that yes uh, there is a question from vikrant yaki why this power factor is getting uh, so down while adding a wind generation that's because what's the wind turbine generator which i have added is uh, thanks thanks for that uh, question vikrant uh, yeah means because uh, we have added a type 1 wind turbine generator that is a scroll cage induction generator that consumes reactive power that consumes reactive power look at when it is generating 1 megawatt it is consuming 620 mvr 620 kvr right if uh, that's really a good question uh, vikrant yes when it is injecting 1000 kilowatt it is consuming 620 kvr that's the real reason why means for say power factor is getting poor so means since you have asked the question let me let me add type 3 yeah let's see what happens type 3 is a doubly fed induction generator right let's have a power factor of uh, uh, means 0.85 but let me give q max and q min say q min i need to really work out and find it but uh, for the uh, very quick uh, this one let's assume this power factor is 0.85 itself maybe uh, 600 kvr that is 0.6 and cumin let me assume 0.3 right so now what i have done i have replaced this uh, type 1 wind turbine with a type 3 wind turbine which is a doubly fed induction generator which has a reactive power capability so now if you go with this uh, uh, wind turbine generator type 3 type 3 probably means what is it? you can see this is generating reactive power this is generating reactive power and hence the reactive power drawal from the grid is reduced so hence the reactive power drawal from the grid is reduced which means the power factor is enhanced which means power factor is enhanced so it, it all depends upon what's the capability of the reactive power of your um, what's the capability of your uh, this one also and if you look at one beautiful information now the reactive power is flowing in the reverse direction that means the power factor is leading yep if i again plot kilowatt kvr you can understand one more things yes reactive power is in the reverse direction let me zoom it a bit more yeah reactive power is in the reverse direction that means when you use a doubly fit induction generator probably means you have uh, option to reduce the capacitor bank ratings even with the maybe 1000 kvr capacitor bank itself you will be able to maintain much better power factor right yes yeah perfect yeah i think uh, means what is the you can see uh, really see means what is the, even with the less capacitor bank rating means we are able to maintain the better power factor that's because the generators are able to generate much uh, uh, reactive power and even this 8000 uh, kvr is not really needed if you carefully align the generator terminal voltage so let me give the generator terminal voltage as say example 105 wind turbine generator so that it generates maximum reactive power capability what double fit induction generator can generate okay okay that's because of what's the reactive power max which i have given that that it couldn't go beyond it right yeah generation is only 100 percent sorry that is voltage i should have changed right yes now probably you can see the wind turbine generator generates further better reactive power and means what to say you are able to maintain unity power factor you are able to maintain unity power factor right so that means if 0.9 power factor alone sufficient you can further reduce your capacitor bank rating further reduce your capacitor bank rating yes yes yeah maybe 500 may not be sufficient but at least maybe 600 will do instead of 1100 so means if you have a doubly fit induction generator which has a capability to generate reactive power that's better that will be able to maintain power factor so here you can see without the without the um, wind turbine generator you may need about 1000 kvr to maintain the power factor but with the wind turbine generator with the doubly fit induction generator i mean for say capacitor bank rating which is needed is less simple reason because this wind turbine generator is able to generate reactive power yes i think uh, that's all from my end and if you have any questions please feel free to uh, post the questions 